Hello, and welcome to the SAP Sample Spotlight Series. Today we have Andre Fisher, a seasoned ABAP product manager and longtime community con contributor. And today's focus is on the ABAP RESTful application progr pro programming model um, with uh, DJ Adams as well. Let's dive in. Thanks. Thanks very much, Brian. And uh, yeah, hi, Andre as well. Welcome. I'm, I'm super hi. excited to have Andre. Um, I think the, the word that you chose, Brian, seasoned, was perfect. Um, you know, Andre and I go back a long way, but also, you know, Andre goes back a long way in the whole uh, sort of ABAP universe and community. So it's just really awesome to have, have you on. So we've got uh, in the SAP samples organization on GitHub, uh, a really cool uh, repo that we want to take a quick look at, which is Cloud ABAP Wrap. Uh, and even though it's called cloud, you know, it's prefixed with the word cloud, I think we're going to find that... Uh, there's also support for on-premise ABAP stacks, but more on that uh, shortly. Um, the repo has been updated quite a lot recently by Andre, and just taking the um, taking the main description, uh, I'm going to I'm going to read this out, and then you know maybe get Andre get you to sort of explain a little bit more about you know what what's delivered in this repo. I, I just love as well there on the right hand side you know the github sort of lang language statistics here it's not often that you see a repo with all red all abap all the time so i think that's wonderful um so yeah it contains sample code that helps developers create boilerplate coding for uh wrap in sap btp abap environment so that's a bit of a mouthful so do you want to explain a little bit more about what that actually means and what you need the boilerplate code for, Andre? Yeah, so yeah, it started way back uh, when when I saw a presentation, an SAP internal presentation about the so-called XCO framework, which which yeah, which is the question though, which which stand for extensibility framework. So it's mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's a bunch of libraries that are available that allow you to generate repository objects. Right. So like tables, data elements, whatever. And it's growing. And uh, when I saw this the first time, yeah, it made click and I saw the, the option yeah, to generate code uh, that you usually have to do. In, so I'm, I, I've, I've prepared lots of tech at session and it was always... Uh, the need that the participants had to create tables, then they started, they had to create CDS views mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, until they came to the very interesting stuff. And um, I thought, hey, this using this libraries, it would be possible uh, yeah, to create uh, yeah, based, on a, based on a table or two mm -hmm. tables, a complete RUP repository object, including interface views, projection views, behavior definitions, just as a starter. And then you can take it from there and add the real interesting stuff. So that was my idea. That's perfect. And that, that to me is the ultimate perfect reason to create a repo, to scratch your own itch. You know, you've been creating all these sessions for tech ed and everything, and you're going through creating these artifacts manually. Mm -hmm. In order to be able to get to a stage where you know you can actually do the the interesting work, the domain modeling work, the you know the actual solving the business problem, right? So that's what this is this is all about. Is that is that is that more or less it? Yeah. No. So I mean, I, I just had a let's have a quick look before we dive mm -hmm. into the because the, the README is really I mean the README is massive, right? Um, and there's all sorts of different uh, sections in the README, which we'll have a look at a few sections shortly. But for those not so familiar with um, a GitHub repo containing ABAP artifacts. I just wanted to have a quick look uh, inside the source directory here, because you know it, what we see is not, you know, not your typical content. You know, we have uh, strange naming conventions, or not strange, but you know, unusual naming conventions. We got .dot um, ABAP, we got .dot XML, and I can also see from you know I've used uh, these repos, you know, on a few occasions myself but you know those familiar will will get this right these are, are sort of in pairs so we have abap code here mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time we also have the sort of the, the metadata definition for that as well so can you just talk us through a little bit about what we're seeing here yeah what you see is here is basically this repository consists out of 
about eight, nine classes. Mm-hmm. Um, here, yeah, if, if you click on one, um, it's the, uh, the, the, no, the node class is, the, the, yeah, the node class is, uh, is, for example, it represents the node of a reposit, of a wrap object. Mm-hmm. So, so what I'm creating here, so, so what it does, uh, uh, hierarchy of objects will be created that represents the rub object mm-hmm. and there are uh, lots of methods uh, that 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 are used to create this object so you you add the name of the entity for example or the name of of a semantic key so things you need when well, all these things that you need to add manually when you create a rub object right and um, yeah and here you see that that's the code. You could take this code as is and use cut and paste and create a class. So that would work. And the other uh, file that you see, this XML file, this this contains uh, um, administrative information about uh, such an object. For example, yeah. Yeah, okay, the class name, obviously, right? Then important is the language, um, some, some description and uh, yeah, for example, whether it, it contains unit tests, so there is an X, mm-hmm. so it, it's some meta information that that has been uh, introduced by the by by uh, by Lars who who invented this ABAP Git uh, uh, yeah syntax exactly. more or less. Exactly. In fact, talking about ABAP Git, I think you've got a reference. If we go back to the README and have a look at the uh, where was it? Uh, download and installation. I mean this. You've got so much information here. This, this is yeah, I, I, I try to I try to put all the technical stuff of information into that uh, uh, you, uh, you, markdown well, document, yeah. and and I will, but I will I will work on putting this in ABAP Doku so that so that it would be part of the source code. You are you are a documentation and blogging monster, Mister. Yeah, Fisher. yeah, but it 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 helps. People, so um, just a colleague from training department, he just read this and he was able to work with that himself. So it, it, I, I say it's not self-explaining. Um, so it, it, it's not it's not end user like, right? So, well, so it, it, but it's for developers. So yeah, exactly. As a developer, you will see what the benefit is. So it is, um, yeah. So, right, you, can... so you, you you download the code. So mm-hmm. the, um, you you have to use the ABAP Git plugin in your ADT. Mm-hmm. in eclipse and, you and then yeah and and then you create a package simply uh in um um in, in, oh, in that case it, it sorry i have to correct this it's not the z namespace it's the dmo namespace because i moved everything there i did notice the, that yeah we, we in the yeah. we got the dmo in here right in the yeah, um, the, 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 yeah it's a technical reason so so dmo is a namespace we use for demo code right on mm-hmm. the one hand and in the trial systems where I have deployed that generator as well. So in the trial systems, you don't have to deploy it. So you can just use it. Um, I'm, I'm distributing it there our in using our ABAP internal techniques. So eat your own dog food. Um, we, um, yeah, I, I use this because it's, it's a bright protected in the trial systems. So nobody can, uh, um, can tap into the source code. If you have your own system, either on premise 2020 or in a in, a, in your own cl- ABAP environment, there you would even be able to edit the code. Exactly, exactly. So in fact, rather than you fix this, Andre, maybe we can get somebody from the community uh, who sees this video, create a pull mm-hmm. request and uh, fix that for us, get involved. Yep, good, yeah. Perfect. So actually, while, while we're here, um, I did notice the, the known issues has been updated recently. So this works um, uh, on-prem as well, uh, but because of the, some of the, um, the limitations of XCO on 2020, you don't get all the features, but you can use it on-prem and you can use it in trial as well, Steampunk? Yep. Yeah, in, in, in the trial system, uh, as I said, I've distributed it. So, so every, in every trial system, you will find uh, uh, a version of it, always the latest version, mm-hmm. which is which I distribute here via GitHub. So there will be a major update for 2108, which is not yet out. Therefore, I have to wait because uh, I have to wait for the delivery of certain features in the XO library. Right. So, so I, I depend on this. So it's 
I'm, I'm working on, on an internal system on that, but I will deliver it as soon as the trial systems and uh, the, the ABAP environment systems have been upgraded to 2108. So that reminds me, actually, because um, you I did see this What's New section with 2101. Uh, sorry, 2102. 2102. I don't know why I said 2101. <laughs> yeah. um, 2102. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the V4 references really, uh, really interest me here. Yeah, so that um, you can you can generate using using that tool, you can generate rough objects using the service binding or data version four. Mm -hmm. um, you can also go for or data version two if you like. So, but um, it's it just uh, it, it's up to you what kind of binding type you need. Yeah, uh, yeah. You, you want you want to use, and you see there this code. This is basically the call. So. So once you, um, it, it's, a, it, it's a command line. So you have to create a JSON file first mm -hmm. to, that defines more or less your object. So this is what, you, what we see there. Exactly, yeah, down here. Yeah, and, uh, and this is then used as an input for the RUP generator. So that, and that's the stable interface. And then it just generates it based on the information you have entered there. Fantastic. And... And it's fair to say that uh, both the managed wrap scenarios and, and also unmanaged scenarios are, are, are catered for, right? Yeah, it's managed and unmanaged is supported. Um, I, I define it here, this managed UUID, that these are the scenarios oh, yeah. where, 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 the, where the framework does the counting. So, so everything is, so even, so the next T is generated. Mm -hmm. And there are managed semantic key scenarios that are supported where you would have to provide the semantic key like a tr like a number from the outside mm -hmm. and last not least we have the unmanaged semantic key scenario where yeah where you as a developer would have to take more care on the implementation side of the house because you would use certain apis such such as barbies and yeah. whatsoever especially where you've got existing business logic right yeah Perfect, perfect. So, I mean, we're almost at the end of uh, at the end of this this uh, this particular session. I mean, you know, uh, mm. there's there's so much here to look at. Is there anything in particular that you want to, uh, you know, call out as a as a last bit of info before we finish here? What uh, are you looking for? Anything from from the community here or uh... a feedback, uh, especially who has used it? So, uh, uh, from time to time, I hear that that people have used it. So mm. uh, that would be great. So. And whether it has helped has helped you. So the and and what can maybe feature requests? What what could what could be added here? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm open for that. So I, I I'm I'm making up my mind. So what 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 I should add there because I have a certain let's say idea what 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 should so so this generator now supports several let's say data sources like tables or CDS yep. views. It can even generate, or it will now be able to generate even custom entities based on abstract entities. So this is something which is which can be quite useful if you want to call an or data service in an on-prem system and want to get some code generated in your ABAP uh, uh, ABAP environment. Fantastic. Okay, well, and, and it and it has been heavily being used in the last uh, open SAP course uh, from uh, Fiori Elements. Ah, yes. So, so there, if 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 there is somebody who participated, you remember you 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 ran a class that generated all the stuff, and this made use of the XCO framework as such, and of the generator in particular. Excellent. What a, what a great way to end. So, um, yeah, so you heard it from Andre. Get involved. Uh, send Andre some uh, suggestions. Let him know uh, whether you've used it, whether it's been helpful or not. Maybe if you're an issue, for example, here. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll see you online. That's it from me. I'll hand back to Brian. Thanks. Yeah, this was this was great. Um, really good stuff. And also nice to, to talk about this and, um, you know, the, the tales of the recent recording. Um, the ABAP past, present, and future, I think it was called last, right. last month with uh, other ABAP legends, Carl yeah, Kessler and Boris Gephardt. 
This is the future. <laughs> it's the future. Yeah. <laughs> nice. This is very much the future. All right. Thanks, gentlemen. Okay. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.